one of my favorite little sayings, which is, I don't know who said it. It's, it's whenever I try to look it up, it's anonymous. But it says this, people of vision see the invisible, they hear the inaudible, they believe the incredible, they think the unthinkable, and they do the impossible. Come on, how many want to do the impossible? Amen? We've got to become people of vision in order to enter into that. All right, number two, the voice of the Lord is personal. In other words, it's going to connect our heart to Jesus, and if we're ministering it to others, it is that which gives us the capacity to make Jesus real. Jesus wants to speak individually to each and every one of us. Not just a blanket word. There's corporate words, but I'll tell you, even in corporate words, when God speaks corporately, each one of us grabs it a different way, right? Because God's voice is personal. He knows you. Song of Solomon 2 verse 13 says, rise up my love, my fair one, and come away. Oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the cliff, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Isn't that the beauty of our relationship with the Lord? He's so personal. He's so personal. Now, how many have ever heard them, people, somebody say to you that your Bible is God's personal word to you? Have you all ever heard this? Okay. That means you take those scriptures and you personalize them. But I just want to caution you, not every scripture can be taken personally. For example, God told Noah, the voice of the Lord told him, go build a boat. Gather two of every kind of animal, et cetera, et cetera, load it up. I don't care how much it rains here in northwest Florida, God has not told you to go build an ark, okay? It's in the Bible, but it's not a personal word to you. God told Isaiah to walk around the streets of Jerusalem naked for three and a half years. This is not the word of the Lord to you. Okay, the Bible is personal, but it is not the word of the Lord to you. But I will tell you that God is a personal God. He knows exactly what you need when you need it. When Apostle Tom and I, when we had our third baby, we had started our church in January. Our son Jason was born in February. And as most of you know, Jason was born with a very severe um, facial birth defect, a bilateral cleft lip and palate. He, t he ended up having, through his upbringing, 13 major reconstructive surgeries um, to repair, um, to, to repair that, that birth defect. And uh, it, was, it was quite a long process. God gave us lots of grace. But, you know, we were just pioneering our church. Our church was only a month old. Um, and uh, we were pioneering the prophetic. So every Friday night, we had different prophets come through and ministered in our churches. And because they knew we were going through a lot, pioneering, and then with our, our son, um, they, different people were giving us lots of, lots of prophetic ministries that they would call us out and minister to us. And it was wonderful. It was amazing things that we're actually doing and walking in today were spoken 35 years ago. But what's interesting is that one night, it was late, we were having a late service, which we did almost every Friday night. And we had a wonderful minister. Her name was Jan Painter. She was a prophet. And she was there that night, and she was praying and prophesying over a lot of people. I was in the back of the church with my kids on the blanket, and they were asleep. And I was just sitting back there, and I said, you know, Lord, I'm so grateful for all the prophetic promises that you've given to us. I'm so grateful for... Um, for, the, for, for all that you've given us in, in the things that we're going to be doing and accomplishing for you, for your kingdom. I said, but you know, Lord, I said, I don't really feel like I necessarily need another prophecy tonight. Has, has anybody ever come to that point? It's kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm overloaded. I got so much to think about. Okay. Um, I said, but I said, if you feel like you want to say something to me, just let me know, like, how am I doing? You know, three small children under the age of three and a half, pastoring a church, pioneering the prophetic, doing conferences once a month. Once a month, we were doing conferences. It was a lot. And I just said to the Lord, you know, Lord, just let me know how I'm doing. Do I need to fast more? Do I need to pray more? Do I need, is there something I'm not doing that I should be doing? This was my conversation with the Lord that night. And time went on through the night. And pretty soon, uh, Prophet Jan, she saw me sitting in the back and she said, Pastor Jane, come here, let me pray for you. 
And I thought, okay, well, and I went up there and she put her hand on my head and she prayed in the spirit for just a minute and then she stopped and she stepped back and she said, you know what, I'm not going to prophesy to you tonight. The Lord just said, tell her she's doing just fine. That prophecy probably meant more to me than so many other words because you know why? God connected with my heart. God answered me, answered my prayer by the very thing that I had just cried out to him. It was like God was saying, listen, I'm real. I'm real. I heard that. You're doing just fine. A big part of the prophetic is just make Jesus real. I know we have prophetic teams that minister here every Friday night. I want to remind you, it's not just about the information. It's about the impartation and about making Jesus real. Number three, the voice of the Lord is positive. It's positive. 1 Corinthians 13, 14, 3 says, prophecy is given for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Okay? It's, it's to build people up. It's to encourage them in their journey. It's to, to, keep, to get people on the... On the on the straight and narrow and to get in alignment with God. Jeremiah 29, 11, which is something that we all know, says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for good and not for evil. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, most of you know that I go to Mercy Ministries and I, and I take a team, Pastor Tiffany, and different ones have gone with us. Apostle Tom goes. Different ones in the church have gone. And we, we go in and we prophesy over some of the most broken young ladies that you'll ever find. Women that have been sex trafficked, some of them by their own family, girls that have been sexually abused from the time they're very young, um, girls that um, have been in drugs and alcohol, raised in horrible environments, girls that have anorexia, that are so sick, they weigh 75 pounds, and they look like little skeletons. And year after year after year, we, we see the word of the Lord go over their lives and instantaneous transformation happen when they hear that God has something good to say over their life. I, I ministered to this one girl years ago, and she was sitting on the back row next to a counselor, and you could tell she was not really happy with our time of ministry there. How could we tell? Because every time I said something, she rolled her eyes and went, <sighs> body language, okay? I caught the clue, okay? She was not thrilled. And so at one point, as I'm trying to teach, she gets up and she leaves and she slams the door on her way out and goes into the restroom. I see her going into the restroom. And while I'm teaching, I hear the Lord say, as soon as she comes back, prophesy to her as soon as she comes back. Because normally I would teach and then I would minister. And so she comes back in, she goes in, she sits down. Like the whole, the whole room is like disrupted. And she's like very unhappy. And so I said, you know what? Why, could I just go ahead and minister to you and kind of put you out of your misery? I didn't, don't think I said that, but that's what I was thinking. And, um, and she goes, yeah, whatever. Really inspires your faith when somebody says whatever, okay? So she came up and I laid hands on her and I began to prophesy to her. I'm going to tell you what I said in just a minute. But later, this is what she said happened. She said that she left the room, she went in the restroom, she said, I was walking back and forth in the restroom, and this is what I was saying. God, I don't even think you're real. I certainly don't think this prophecy stuff is real. All my life, I've asked you question after question, and you've never once answered me. So God, if you're real, you better prove it to me today. And she came in and sat down. And I said, can I minister to you? Now, of course, I had no idea that all that had just happened. So she comes up. She got her hand cocked on her hip like, show me what you got. So I just shut my eyes, laid my hands on her shoulder, and this is what the Lord said to her. I had no idea what just happened. This is what the Lord said to her. My daughter, you say you've had question after question that I've never answered. And because I'm God, I don't have to prove myself to you. But because I love you, I will prove myself to you. And honestly, I can't tell you what the rest of the prophecy meant because it was, it was all kinds of like disjointed sentences, but she showed me later on that what God was doing is he was going in and answering one question after the next, after the next, after the next. 
And when I got done prophesying to her, she grabbed the microphone out of my hand, which is terrifying. And she said, you guys, let me tell you what just happened. I just found out that God is real. That's our job, to make Jesus real. And then she told the story. The voice of the Lord is positive. God wasn't there to shame her. God wasn't there to beat up on her. God wasn't there to tell her all the things that she'd done wrong in her life. She already knew all those things. God was there to love her, to convince her, and to woo her to his side. 